By now, the Toyota 86 doesn't need any introduction. But this is the second generation version, and it's added some grrr to the nameplate. That's right, this is the GR86, and it's angrier than ever. Still rear wheel drive, still no turbo engine, still the benchmark when it comes to driving dynamics for this sort of money. Well, in this review, you'll find out. I'm gonna tell you everything you want to know and all the stuff you need to know as well. And remember, if you wanna read it, you can go to Cars Guide and read my full written review there. And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to like and subscribe. It helps us out a lot. Now, let's start off with driving because, well, that's why you're here, right? That should tell you some of the story about the drive experience. It does sound a lot louder and it does feel a lot faster. And it is faster. There's now a bigger engine. That 2.4 litre four cylinder boxer engine does have a lot more power and torque than the old two litre. And you can really feel it when you are accelerating. It's just a lot more effortless in the way that it manages to get the power to the ground. Also, there's the choice of a six speed manual or six speed automatic. You'll make up your own mind about which one of those you prefer. I'm in the manual right now, and just like the last model, the shift action isn't as good as it could be. It's just a little bit notchy, but at least the clutch is easy to manage. One thing that Toyota has done with the 86 compared to the BRZ is they say that they've tuned the engine to feel more responsive than the other car. And I can't really say, I'm not driving them back to back, so I can't really say with any sort of confidence whether that's the truth, but it does feel very peppy and very linear in the way that it revs. Toyota says that you should be able to achieve almost all of the torque from about three and a half thousand RPM all the way up to six and a half thousand RPM. And it does feel very grunty. The in-gear acceleration is one of the things that Toyota focused on with this car. And in the last generation version, there wasn't all that much in-gear acceleration to be had. You did find yourself rowing through the gears quite a lot. Whereas in this version, it just feels like you are able to basically leave it in gear and accelerate out of whatever situation you're in. Now let's talk about the other crucial elements of the drive experience, the steering and the suspension. The suspension firstly is quite firm. The whole body has been stiffened up to be, well, stiffer. And you can feel that as a result when you are on roads like I'm on today. And it is not necessarily the most comfortable sports car out there. It certainly doesn't feel as cushy as the last generation model. But I guess that goes with the intent of this car. It's designed to be a bit more angry. And well, Toyota says that the GR badge has to be earned. So it had to be a little bit more aggressive to drive. And if you are the sort of person who will spend most of their time around town, maybe make sure you test drive it over the road that you might drive on all the time, because it might be just a little bit hard work if you do have a really bumpy area where you live. But when it comes to the steering, well, it's very, very good. It's nice and accurate super direct and has nice feel through the wheel as well. I guess my biggest criticism so far is that it's quite noisy in here. There's a lot of road noise to contend with. These are the 18 inch wheels with only 215 millimeter wide tires. So they're not necessarily the biggest contact patch on the road, but still they're throwing a whole lot of noise in to the cabin from this coarse chip surface, which is the sort of road that you'll see pretty much everywhere across Australia. I've given you some information about how the manual drives, and unfortunately I didn't get a chance to drive the six speed automatic on the road, but I can tell you that it is just a little bit less engaging based on a track drive that I did in that model. Now, speaking of engagement, let's take a look under the bonnet because there's a bit to talk about. It'd be easy to think of Toyota as a brand that only really sells diesels and hybrids, but this Toyota has a different engine to any other petrol Toyota that there is. And that's because this engine actually comes from Subaru. It even says so on top of the engine cover. It's a 2.4 litre engine this time around. So it's bigger than the last one. And as you can see on your screen, the power outputs are bigger than the last generation model as well. That means this one has at least 15% more power and torque than the last one. But no, it's still not turbocharged and I'm not the only one here at the launch wishing it was. 
Toyota has never claimed that the 86 is about outright speed, but this new generation model is faster than ever before. We're talking 6.3 seconds, 0 to 100 for the manual model, and 6.8 for the automatic. I mean, it makes sense. More power, more torque, bigger engine, faster car. If you're the sort of person who's buying a car like this, you probably don't care how often you're doing this. But there are a few things about the fuel consumption of this new GR86 that you need to know. It's thirstier across the board, and the fuel consumption figures are on your screen now. And they show you that there is a variance between the manual and the automatic, and also the trim level that you choose. Essentially, it is thirstier than before, and it also requires 98 Ron premium unleaded petrol, which could be a consideration for you. If you're wondering what we've seen during our drive of this car on the launch drive, it's on your screen now. As you can see, a little bit higher than the claim, but actually not that bad considering we're wringing its neck. Oh, I can still remember that day like it was yesterday. There I was in that room with all those journalists, at that shed next to that track in Canberra where Toyota announced that the first generation 86 was going to cost less than $30,000 for the GT manual base model. It was a bombshell. None of us were expecting it. And in fact, I was shocked. Now, more than 10 years later, at another shed next to another racetrack, I'm also shocked at the price of the new 86, the GR86 that is. And that's because it's so much more expensive now than it ever was. The base model GT is $43,240, and that's before on-road costs. And if you want the GTS like this one, which gives you a few extra items that you're probably going to want, it's $45,390, an extra $2,150 over the GT. So yeah, it's pretty expensive compared to what it used to be. You can read all the details about what you get in the GT and the GTS in my written detailed review. That's in the description below. I guess if there's one good piece of news from this pricing story, it's that, well, the manual and the automatic are now priced exactly the same. So that either means you're getting an automatic for free or you're getting overcharged for your manual. And the manual model actually misses out on a few crucial safety items that the automatic gets. So if safety matters to you, well, you're going to have to read my review. If you decide that you want a manual GR86, you aren't getting as safe a car as if you bought the automatic version. It's that simple. Let me explain. That's because the manual versions still miss out on all the now expected active safety technology like auto emergency braking, lane keeping technology and even adaptive cruise control. What all GR86s do get is a reversing camera, seven airbags, and tire pressure monitoring. I've got more detail in my written review linked below, but for 2023 and beyond, those specs are well behind the times. All right, let's play a game. Let's see if you can pick every difference between this, the GR86, and this, the BRZ, and for every correct answer, you get 10 points. So. For the first person who gets the right answer in the comments section below, you win a prize. So you ready? Three, two, one, go! It's hard, isn't it? The changes between the two models are seemingly less prominent than the last generation. And really, at a glance, you might only notice the badges have changed. It could be even harder to pick them from the back. Again, if someone decided to debadge their BRZ or GR86, you could struggle to notice what's changed. Inside, it's possibly even harder to spot what's changed, unless you're looking at the GTS version with the optional red finish in the GR86. Okay, so how did you go? My score was 700 points. No, not really, but the differences are pretty subtle, you have to admit. Next up, let's take a look at the practicality of this little coupe. Are you the sort of person who's looking to upgrade from your old 86 or BRZ? Well, it's not going to feel 
dramatically different in here to you if that's the case. If you're new to GR86, well, it might also feel like it's not an overly new interior experience because there are some carryover elements and the design hasn't changed dramatically between the last generation and this one. Obviously, there are some changes, some important ones too, including this new media screen, which isn't like any other Toyota screen because it's not, it's a Subaru screen. And that's not a problem. It works pretty well, although, I have had my phone drop out on Apple CarPlay a couple of times, even on this short launch drive. So that's a little alarming. Other things that you will notice that are different about the cabin, this steering wheel feels nicer in the hand. It just sits better. It seems like it's not as chunky or chubby as the last one. And I like that. And also behind that, you'll notice digital instrumentation. I do like that too, because it is an upgrade from the previous version, which had the regular old dials. It does look pretty neat and it is easier to read at speed, which is important in a car like this. Some of the other carryover style elements, are, well, this one's got a regular old handbrake, which is pretty cool. There are seat heater switches down here as well, as there used to be in the top spec versions at least. And now there's also a climate control dial system here, which thankfully is still dials and doesn't run through a screen like some of the other new cars out there. Like I said, it is an all new, so that's kind of a nice thing to its benefit. There are cup holders between the seat here, uh, and that button seems a little bit glitchy, which is a bit annoying. They are big enough for bottles, and that's good because the bottle holders in the doors tend to let the bottles sort of move around a lot, especially in a car like this. They aren't as secure as they probably should be. There's also USB ports in there so you can connect up to the screen, which is good. And also let's talk about comfort and basically the support that the seat offers you because the seat is excellent. It has a really nice feel to the support underneath your thighs and up your back as well. You need to feel like you are sitting in a sports car when you're sitting in a sports car and these seats certainly live up to that notion. Now, I guess I should probably show you what the back seat's like. You're gonna make me do that? Okay. Yeah, this is awesome. This is exactly what this car's made for, fitting a six foot person behind their own driving position. No, but seriously, it isn't made for tall people. You can fit kids back here or shorter people. There are isofix points and top tether points for both seats as well, which is a bonus if you do happen to use this, maybe as a second car and you do want to put a child seat in the back. But as it is for adults, don't, just don't. You aren't buying a Toyota 86 Coupe if you want the most practical Toyota, and there are probably dozens of other Toyotas you could choose. And this car does have a pretty small boot. And there's also a lift up section here, uh, which used to have an optional spare wheel, but there's no spare wheel option anymore this time around. Now you can fold the seat back down as you could with the last one, and that will allow you to fit four wheels and tires in the back provided that they're not 25 inch wheels with massive tires, of course, but it is a practical enough sports car for someone who is going to go to the track or who just wants a nice weekender. The Toyota GR86 comes with a five year unlimited kilometer warranty, which is bang on average for a mainstream brand. But if you maintain your car with the brand, you get up to seven years of powertrain cover. That means engine transmission, that sort of stuff. Unlike other performance models though, there's no track warranty cover. Capped price servicing is included for up to five years or 75,000 Ks, meaning maintenance is due every 12 months or 15,000 Ks. Is it fairly priced? Well, at $280 per visit for the first five services, it represents an annual saving of about $215 over the equivalent Subaru. That's a nice way to recoup a little bit of that extra cost that Toyota charges initially. The sort of person who's looking at a GR86 has probably already made up their mind that they want one. Or maybe you're the sort of person who's looking to upgrade from the old 86 and wondering whether this is worth that extra money. Well, the answer is yes. It is more expensive, but it does also feel like a more complete and more compelling sports car experience than the last generation model. Maybe not quite as fun, and that could be a crucial element for some customers, but it is definitely technically more impressive. Now, if you're wondering what my score is, that's coming up in a sec. And if you are watching on YouTube, don't forget, hit like and subscribe, it helps us out. Thanks for watching, here comes that score.